Welcome to the fifth and final of a series of five that I'm doing for the Senior Cathedral City Senior Center. Um, so I've tried to do a progressive, uh, really a foundation for the work that I do that in integrates Hatha Yoga with uh, Chinese um, martial arts energetic healing techniques and with um, um, like stop time out. <laughs> Welcome to the fifth and um, final of a series of five of um, sessions, yoga sessions that I'm doing for the Cathedral City Senior Center. Um, I tried to pace it so from the very beginning I laid a foundation for the work that I do which integrates Hatha Yoga, Vinyasa Yoga with um, Chinese um, martial arts healing techniques and, um, and to what I'm doing today which is kind of a mix of um, integrating the chair yoga with the more advanced yoga classes. So I tried to, to, pay, uh, to pace that. So this last of the, of the series of five will, um, will be useful and beneficial and effective for if you're a very beginner or you, even you're for a more advanced student. Um, I also teach on, at, the fountain of, at a closed group, Fountain of Life Yoga, um, on Facebook. So if you want to continue, or if we decide that I can also come in, t when, when the time comes, I can come to the center and teach a class there. I live like three blocks away. Um, also, Bill Lyons, who lives at the center, who lives um, in, in the housing, uh, has been studying with me for about eight years. And he's like 70 something. I'm going to be 70 this year, so in fact, the students, most of my students are uh, in, their, in their 60s and, and 70s, and as you can see and you will see that we are not your fathers, our parents, 70-ish. Um, in any case, let me get going. So I have adapted some of these, all of the exercises, and I, don't, I do want you to get a workout. So um, one of the, uh, uh, the principles that I, I talk about is, is stacking your bones so that you're in alignment. So again, when we stand, you want your shoulders to be right over your hips, over your heels, as opposed to being here. And how we do that, muscles move the bones. You start by thinking of pulling up your core muscles, and I've used the imagery of a, of, of a zipper. If you had a zipper from your crotch to your navel to your sternum, you'd pull that zipper up, and then you, you, your bones will be in alignment. Um, I've adapted this, the, the, uh, the asana of chair. So the, the, the classic chair position would be here. So I've re-codified um, it so that this would be what I call the upright chair where you bend your knees as far as you can without lifting your heels. Uh, when you go to your diagonal chair, you still maintain the integrity of your spine so it's energized and you come back to the upright chair and then lift from the crown of your head. So I've integrated the idea of energy through your spine. Okay, so if you, you can think of like a shaft of light um, uh, shining through your spine and the brighter the light the more invigorated you are you can just you can just use your thought energy to uh, to get that going right so to get the get the um, imagery of that so again feet together everybody upright chair diagonal chair upright chair and lift upright chair diagonal chair upright chair and lengthen so even when you're in the diagonal position, the same way you're trying to elongate your spine in the upright position, you're still elongating it to the diagonal. Come back to the upright chair, and then when you straighten your legs, you want to lift from the crown of your head. So the warm-up that I no normally start with um, is the ch uh, chair, diagonal chair position. So you slice to your diagonal chair, and you come back and recover with your arms up. Again, exhale, slice to your diagonal chair, and you lift up. Exhale, slice and lift and slice and the variation of that is you can go down and then lift up on your toes to recover work a little more work exhale diagonal chair slice up slice down and up and hold now we're going to do a series of uh, diagonal chairs to the side inhale lift slicing to your left inhale lift slice to your right inhale lift slice to your left inhale lift slice to your right and up and then from here you're just going to float your arms down so this is the variation you can do um, from the chair, the literal chair position. 
So if you're doing this from chair yoga, you can sit at the end of your chair, and it's good to have a folding chair because it's easy to move around. So here's your upright chair, right? So you can go to your diagonal chair, upright chair, diagonal chair, upright chair, diagonal chair, and up. And if you do the arms, you go to your diagonal chair, and lift, diagonal chair, and lift, and slice this to the side. Let's start with the arms up, slice to your diagonal, and then lift, 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 and float your arms down. So the idea here is what I try to do for my years of dance training is, you wanna warm your body up, um, so you don't wanna do any big stretches while your body is not prepared. So when you warm your body up, warm those muscles up and get those tendons and, um, and the ligaments working, <clears throat> when you start to do the big stretches, you, will, you won't be prone to injury. So continue on that. So on my diagonal chair uh, exercise, you can also go from your diagonal chair, lift the leg up and then down, lift the leg up to your diagonal, up to your diagonal. And the variation of that on the chair would be here on your diagonal, you lift one leg up, and then down, exhale. And you lift up, and then down, and up. So you can still get a good workout just from doing it from the chair. Up, and then down. I'm starting to break a sweat already. All right, so the last variation of that is, <clears throat> those of you who are standing, when, you do, when you're at your diagonal chair, you can take the leg behind you, and lift up, and then back, and then up, and then back, and when you switch to the other side, and up, and then back. So on the chair, on the little chair, <clears throat> you start with the leg back this way. Let's say we're gonna do three on one side. Lift the leg up, slice back. Lift the leg up, slice back, and then you do as many as you want, and you alternate on the other side. Leg up, diagonal back, and then up, and then back. Right, so all those variations. The other one, when you're in the, when you're when you're slicing to the side, um, in the standing position, you'd be here and you put your left hand on your hip, lengthen your spine, and you would rotate to the side. Right, and then it would be the other side, lengthen, rotate your spine. Hi, Mary. Hi, sweetie. You're gonna do downward facing dog with us, and then release and up. So same thing happens from the chair. In your diagonal chair position here, you put the arm up, lengthen your spine and rotate. And then recover back, deep breath in, other side, arm on the hip, hand on the hip, arm peels across your back. And then back, take a deep breath in, up, and then float your arms down. So again, the idea of working your core is, zipper goes from your crotch to your navel to your sternum, and you pull that up, so you're nice and, and lifted and, um, and, and in, in alignment as opposed to what we want to always do is here. Okay, so that's one of our first warm, warm up. So sometime, uh, sometimes I integrate that or interchange that with the lymphatic qigong. Qi is work in Chinese, energy is uh, gong. I mean, qi, <laughs> qi is, is energy, gong is work. And we do this lymphatic qigong exercise where we drain toxins out of our body. We do that by activating the, lymph, the pairs of lymph nodes through our body, um, designated places in our body on, on these meridians. So you put your feet about uh, shoulder width apart again. Always, always, always when you bend your knees, it goes over the center of your foot, or maybe even better, think about not pronating on your arches. But you wanna lift your arches, the knees goes over the center of the foot, and then from here, we're gonna start bouncing. So there are these pairs of lymph nodes, and what we wanna do is just get them, they shut down when you're, when you're stationary. So this is a good exercise to do first thing in the morning. Just get to, um, the fluids moving, the blood going, get your lymph system going, and the way my teacher taught this to me decades ago is like patting the edge of a loaf of bread. Tap, 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 tap. Inhale, exhale, breathe. So this kick starts the lymph system. Take a breath in, lengthen your spine, rotate to your left. Still try to keep the weight between both feet. Inhale, exhale, breathe. And then back to center, over to the other side. So we're trying to do a rotation through the waist, through the lower back, through where your um, lower abdominals are. Back to center. Keep the bouncing through your hips and over to the ceiling. Inhale, exhale, breathe. 
rotate to the left. So in these rotations, you want to try not to favor one foot. So you're going to want to switch over to one foot here, but try to keep the weight, your hips going forward with the weight evenly distrib distributed between both feet, but you're going to rotate your torso around. Take a breath in over to the other side. Breathe. Get back to center. Inhale, exhale, breathe. So even though we're doing the arms, there's very little action into your wrist. Hi. And uh, <laughs> it's really like three of where your shoulders are. I'm going to rotate to your left, look over your shoulder. Back to center, over to the other side. <clears throat> and then back, inhale, exhale, breathe. Rotate to the left. Back to center, over to the other side. And then sort of like bouncing a basketball. Bound, down, 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 down. Um, you want to integrate all of these, these different um, uh, movements, right? So not, you, you want to start with the hips, that's bouncing, and then the hands are going, and then you're conscious of breathing. All right, so now we're going to just keep bouncing. As you uh, bounce, I want you to start to take steps forward. Change the weight. Forward. And then reverse it. Breathe. Back. And then feet together. Good. Take a deep breath in and out again fill your lungs up to full capacity and then out one more deep breath in and out and another uh, lymphatic chicken exercise just really quickly you're going to tap 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 the inner part of your thighs tap 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 and a little bit higher so you're going to do in the hollow part of your rib cage under your rib cage a little bit higher, right where your sternum is, a little bit higher where your collarbone is, and a little bit higher in the top of your head. Um, so full integration, uh, integration of this work is, other than the physical and, and the mental work, uh, is um, this intuitive work that you can do. Uh, and what I want to do is I want you to start to do that. So I want you to shake, shake any negative energy out. So again, I, and I've mentioned this in some of the other lessons, where if you can think, if you weren't, let's say you're worrying about something, right? So, so generally this cloudy and dark and so it's generally, um, um, it's a fear of the unknown, so you have fear. So if you can think of like fear and darkness just floating in, in your, between your ears here, and you wanna release that, you wanna get rid of all of that and replace that with light and love and healing, right? So um, to some people it'd be like, oh my God, that's so hippy dippy. But it's just, the, it's just an added layer of the work that you can do um, by using your imagination and, and, and playfulness, your idea of playfulness, let's say these alphabets are floating around in the, in the ether around you, and every inhale you take, you're gonna pick out all the L-O-V-E's in that order, all the H-E-A-L-I-N-G healing, right? And, and th uh, think of light and beauty, all those alphabets, and take it in, you're gonna replace the dark, you're gonna take out the fear, you're gonna ex uh, expire it through, um, when you exhale, so we take out all the fear and replace it with this loving and caring and healing. All right, so just an, again, just an added layer of um, homeostasis is your is your is your the level of your well-being. All right, all right. Um, one more time, tap tap tap. This is a good exercise too if you have to like sit down and do your taxes or <laughs> something you're worried about. Just kind of shake it up and then shake it out. Think of like all this negative energy coming out through your fingertips. Okay, so. Again, about life source and energy. Let's think of here, this is your heart center, and we always want to radiate away. So even when we talk about lifting the spine, if this is your center, you're going to radiate towards the top of your head and then down to the tailbone. So even if you're in a diagonal, you're still radiating. And then when your arms are to the side, they're not just placed to the side, but they're actually reaching away. So think of somebody on one side pulling your arm here, someone on the other side there, and it's like they're doing a tug of war, but they're evenly pulling. So what happens is you start to open up through your sternum and open up between your shoulder blades. So any position that you're in, if you, um, let's see, if you're on, on, uh, reaching to the side like this, you're still opening up your chest, right? So from here, and even when you're like back here, you're still reaching back. Um, so let's go to, through from the become of the front of your mats. Take a deep breath in, exhale out, deep breath in, Giant swan dive forward to the forward bend. So your belly here, your legs are straight, the belly is close to the upper thighs, the crown of the head is dropping towards the floor, and you keep your belly down, inhale, monkey up. Exhale, crown of the head down. Let's do three more of those. Inhale, monkey up. 
Exhale, crown of the head down. Inhale, monkey up. Exhale, crown of the head down. Inhale, monkey up, and then down. From here, um, those of you who have the upper body strength to do that, you will step back to downward facing dog. <laughs> and then from downward facing dog, your legs are straight, you're using your upper body to push back. You're gonna go to plank, top of push up position. Then exhale, chaturanga, keep your elbows close to your rib cage. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, pull back to child's pose. And then you rock back to downward facing dog. Soften your knees, look between your hands, walk or jump to diagonal chair. Come back to one piece, exhale, float the arms down, deep breath in and out. Good, so the variation of that is, those of you who are still working, who are still working to develop your upper body strength, instead of, from the forward bend, instead of going to down dog, you would just go to diagonal chair. So in, um, to demonstrate, inhale up, big swan dive forward to the forward bend. And then we do the monkey up and then down. And then from here, those of you going to the ground, will go to down dog. Those of us who are standing, yeah, from the chair position, you go for diagonal chair. Then from here, you put hands on your thighs, and as they do the uh, down dog to, to chaturanga to up dog, we're gonna go um, cat, standing cat. Exhale, standing cow. Exhale, cat. People on the floor are pushing back to um, child's pose. We're still doing our cat and cow. People on the floor are going to do down dog. And then everybody is gonna catch up to diagonal chair. And we come back one piece, inhale up, exhale, float the arms down. Okay, deep breath in, and out. Deep breath in, and out. Good, warming up, warming up, warming up. All right, let's do, um, let's go to get a drink of water. You know, hydrate, always hydrate, always hydrate, especially for those of us here in the desert. <clears throat> and we are at the cathedral, at the senior center. <laughs> Get your drink of water and you're gonna come back to your mountain. So this asana, you're grounded, your feet are planted. For us again, your shoulders are right over your hips, right over your ankles. And just close your eyes. So I'm gonna direct you to a series of mind, um, mind games, <laughs> in a good way, mind games. So listen to your breath. I want you to direct your attention to your breath, just with your eyes closed. In through your nose, out through your mouth. And let's now redirect most of our sensory perceptions to the bottom of your feet. What do you feel? Maybe the sponginess of your mat, hardness of the floor. We're just gonna um, witness, attend to, we're gonna witness it, observe it, not judging it, not letting your mind wander anywhere, just thinking about the bottom of your feet things, uh, sensations, and let's um, expand that by drawing your attention to the surface of your skin, all the sensations that you may be feeling, perhaps the air going by, if you have clothes on, the weight of clothes on, hanging on your body, and now let's redirect our attention to sounds all the audible things near and far. Make a list of things you hear. And then come back to your breath. And then set a goal for the rest of the class, what you want to, how, what you want to feel like or what you want to accomplish by the end of the class. And then open your eyes. Good. Um, so, um, the idea of that, that, that um, little meditation that we did, is about, being, about, about consciously directing your attention to where you want it to go. Um, as opposed to being drifting off like, you're standing there and going, hmm, I wonder what we're gonna have for lunch. And if you wanna like reel that back in, so all it is is a mental discipline, so the more that we do activities like that, the better we are doing it, all right? So, and that has to do with being in the present about um, not worrying about what happened in the past, not really worrying about what's gonna happen in the future, but if we stay present, if we take care of the moment right now, that everything else is gonna take care of itself. Okay, all right, so let's continue. Feet together, deep breath in, exhale out. Deep breath in, giant swan dive forward. Exhale, crown of the head down, belly down. Inhale, monkey up. 
Exhale, forward bend. Drop the crown of the head towards the floor. Go to your diagonal chair. Come up in one piece. And then up, upright chair with your arms to the side. Open up your arms. Slide the left leg back to a standing lunge. You can put your hands on your thighs or your hips. You can also use your chair as, as support. Okay? That way you can do any one of these arm positions, but you, you, um, you'll be more balanced. So let's go from here. So the back leg is straight, the knee is pointing towards the floor. Lower the back heel and then push away. Lower the back heel and push away. So keep the knee straight. I want you to use the muscles in your back foot to push away. Just warming it up and then down. Good, from here, let's take a hand to prayer. You're gonna press down on the armpits. You can use the chair or you would be here. From here, bend your back knee and then stretch it out. Bend the back knee, stretch it out. Bend the back knee, stretch it out, arms to the side. You can bring the back, uh, again, if, if you're not using the chair, both arms would come up and then step back or up and then back, up and then back. From here, when you spin your back foot out so it's flat on the floor, go to prayer and standing to warrior one. So in warrior one, you wanna lengthen your waist, lengthen your spine. You're reaching up. Think of like energy sources, like light energy sources that starts from your hips and they shoot up your rib cage, up past your arms. And you're reaching so high that you almost arch back a little bit. The bottom of your back foot is flat on the floor. I want you to try to push it down and then try to slide it forward without moving it. Any Alex to breathe. So we are in warrior one. Good, inhale, exhale, close to prayer. We're gonna to transition to warrior two. Hips and um, shoulders facing the side. Good, straighten the front leg to triangle. Bend the front knee to warrior two. Triangle, warrior two. Triangle, warrior two. You can put your hand, grab your elbows behind you, or you can do whatever with your arms to help you find your balance. And because I'm give, allowing you for these different variations on the on your proficiency, lift the front heel, put it down. Lift the front heel, open up your chest, front heel, and then down. Open your arms to warrior two. Go to triangle again. Then warrior two and side angle pose. You're gonna lift that back arm, open up. I'm gonna just demonstrate from the side so you can see. I'll talk to you about energy sources. You wanna think of like, um, like a light or energy source that starts from the hip. It goes up your rib cage, past your fingertips, and then the other one, the complementary one, goes from your shoulder, down your rib cage, down outside of your ankle, and you're reaching in warrior two, I mean to side angle pose. Inhale, exhale, breathe and stretch. You can hold on to your chair, opening up the rib cage. Remember the back foot, you don't want to be pronating on your back foot. Lift the arch. Good, up and over, back to warrior two. Straighten the front leg to triangle again. Lunge, triangle, warrior two, triangle, warrior two. From here, now reach back with the other arm to reverse warrior. We're stretching from the hip, up the rib cage, past the fingertips. And then from here, those of you who have, who have the upper body strength, as if you're doing a cartwheel, you're gonna go up and over to downward facing dog. And then those of us who are standing, we just go to diagonal chair. The down dog people would go to plank, chaturanga, the down dog, up dog. The standing people will go cat and cow standing. People on the floor will recover to down dog. And everybody catches up to diagonal chair. We all recover together, inhale up. Exhale, float the arms down. Take a deep breath in and out. Deep breath in and out. Exhale. Deep breath in and out. We shake it out. 
other side. Smile. It helps to smile. <laughs> Just know that you're doing so many, um, so much, such benefit to your own body and your mind actually uh, to do these exercises and stay focused. Take a deep breath in and out. Breath in. Giant swan dive forward to the forward bend. You can hold on to the back of your calves or thighs. On each exhale, you're going to try to get your belly closer to your upper thighs and then the crown of your head down towards the mat. Try not to rock back into your heels. Inhale, monkey up. Exhale, crown of the head down. Inhale, monkey up. Exhale, crown of the head down. Inhale, monkey up. Exhale, forward bend. And then from here, go to your diagonal chair. Swing up to one piece. Inhale up. Exhale, upright chair, arms to the side. If you need the chair, hold on to it. Now you're going to take the right leg back to a standing lunge. Lower the back heel, stretch it out. Press away. Lower the back heel. Press away. Use the muscles in your back foot as you push away and then down. If you have your back foot on the heel on the floor, you want to take a wider lunge so you, have, um, you can be a little more challenged. From here, you can go to prayer here, here. Wherever it is again that you're going to be secure, we're working the back leg now. So bend the back knee and straighten it out. Bend the back knee, straighten it out. In this particular exercise, the height of the body is not changing. So we're not going from here to here. We're keeping it this low and just bending the back knee and then stretching it out. Bend the back knee and then stretch it out. Good. And from here, you're going to lift the knee up and then back. Or two arms, and then back. Let's just do one more. Knee up, and then back. So you're, this is our standing lunge. You're balancing on the balls of the back foot on the back. Go to prayer. Spin the back foot out flat on the floor now. Here we are in warrior one. So we want to re, um, integrate some of uh, the the, uh, the work that we were doing earlier, specific work. Pull your zipper up so you're, you're nice and lifted. Your pelvis is nice and upright. You lengthen your waist, reaching up. The back foot. I want you to press it down into the ground and try to slide it forward without moving it. Breathe. We're in order one. Inhale, exhale, close to prayer and transition to order two. Good. Hips and shoulders are facing the side. So the knee should be going right over your ankle as opposed to going past your toes. If it's not, just take a wider stance. Breathe. Lengthening your spine. Opening your arms. Straighten the leg to a triangle position. Bend the knee. Triangle. Bend the knee. Triangle. Bend the knee. From here, you can grab your elbows behind. You can put on your hips. Again, wherever it's going to be secure for you, pull your zipper up so you don't you support your lower back. Lift the front heel up and then down. Open your chest. Up and then down. You can also hold onto the chair. Up and then back. Up and then back. Good. And warrior two, and then straighten to triangle again. Open your chest. Open your back. Lengthen your spine. Warrior two. Side angle pose. Breathe. So the two sources of energy that we're, the two dynamics that we're attending to, there's an energy source that begins at your hip. It shoots up your rib cage, past your arm, past your fingertips, and the uh, complementary one goes from your shoulder, down the rib cage, down the waist, down into the outside ankle, into the floor as you open up, breathe, lengthen your spine. And then recover up, triangle again, breathe, lunge forward again, warrior two, reaching back to reverse warrior. Okay, good. For those of you who are going to the standing position, you guys just go to diagonal chair. And those of us who are down here are going to go to downward facing dog. <coughs> 
Standing People Are Doing, Standing Cat and Cow, a series of those. We're going down to Chaturanga, inhale up dog. Exhale back to child's pose. <clears throat> Rock forward to downward facing dog. And then we're all gonna catch up a diagonal chair. Come up in one piece, inhale up. Exhale, float the arms down. Deep breath in. And out. You can shake it out. All right. Hydrate again. Come back. We'll meet you to do some core work on the floor. Bend your knees, flex your, ankle, flex your ankles, interlace your fingers, straighten your arms, round your pelvis under, and then commit the weight of your torso to your arms. Nice stretch to the lower back, to your shoulders, wherever it is for you. Breathe. And then from here, start to undo your fingers. <clears throat> Palms are facing down, you're gonna beat. Do you like oars and I can go paddling you go inhale two three four five exhale two three four five inhale two three, four, five exhale inhale keep going exhale <clears throat> so what you'll be doing is to challenge yourself you can roll a little bit lower as long as you have still control you can also alternate lifting one heel with the other one we're going inhale two three four five exhale two four five and you can also lift both heels Over heels back down and then recover up. Keep the arms, you lengthen waist, you lengthen your waist and float the arms down. Good. <clears throat> Just rock your hips out, breathe. <clears throat> Good. All right, hands are under your shoulders, fingertips facing forward. The variation of this is you can lean back into your arms, you're going to bend your elbows and then push away, bend your elbows, and push away. The exercise itself would be from here. Your arms are straight, bend your elbows, and push away. Let's do five of those. Inhale, exhale, push away. Inhale, exhale, push away. Inhale, exhale, push away. Inhale, and push away. Um, you can continue, or the progression of this would go one leg is forward, Exhale, everything bends. Inhale, stretch. Exhale, bend. Everything stretch. Legs and arms bend. Legs and arms stretch. Bend and stretch. Let's do one uh, more. Other side. Knee to the nose. Exhale, inhale, stretch. Exhale, inhale, stretch. Exhale, inhale, stretch. Exhale, one more. Bend and stretch. Good. All right. Take the tops of your wrists. Keep the tops of the wrist pressed down, lower, keep it engaged, lower the wrist towards your navel, and then drop your elbows towards the floor as you keep pressing your tops of your wrist together. So make any adjustment you need to stretch out the top of the forearm. If you got that going on, you can stretch your, drop your chin forward to stretch the back of your neck. Breathe. And then roll up, fingertips towards you, keep it going in the same direction. Fingertips down and then press the heels of your hands together and drop your elbows towards the floor. And shake it out. Good. Let's do the hip stretch. Fingertips going forward, lean back into your arms could drop your knees to the left, lean into your left arm, stretch out your waist. Breathe. Inhale, exhale over to the other side. Breathe and stretch. Inhale, exhale over to the other side. And then extend the top leg. 
breathe and the knee up and over other side stretch the top leg out breathe good bend the knee back up to center and then shake it out all right almost done lifting up you're gonna roll down and roll up exhale down inhale lift up navel into your spine inhale lift exhale down inhale lift exhale down <coughs> a lift one more down and to the side exhale down inhale lift exhale down inhale lift a down inhale lift and a down and a lift and good so obviously you can do more if you want um, as you start to build more strength and flexibility you'll be able to do to, to do more all right um, just cross your legs doesn't matter which side because you're going to do the other side and now it's just rock your hips from side to side okay, so now what we're going to do is keep the hips planted and just rock your torso gently from side to side without lifting your hips good now cross to change the cross of your legs let's rock again hips are going breathe keep it grounded and just rock your torso side to side breathe and good. all right let's go on to our knees so pull your hips all the way back to your heels breathe if you if you manage to do that um, you're gonna start to lengthen your torso in front otherwise get comfortable you can put something on your knees if, it, if it's uh, too un uncomfortable we're gonna stretch out your spine your lower back and your arms so drop your, your hips towards your heels and then start to peel your back down and then reach forward try to keep your hips back onto your heels and stretch your arms forward inhale exhale breathe And then from here, so to, to start to build strength in our upper body, let's go to dolphin. So ball your fist, make a little equilateral triangle. Rock forward. Elbows are as wide as your shoulders. Tuck your toes under and then lift your hips up towards the ceiling. And then walk it out in place. Stretching out your feet, your heels. Articulating the muscles in your toes. Breathe and stretch. And then both legs are straight and push away to dolphin. Breathe. Good lower in the knees. Push it back to all fours. You can extend your right leg parallel to the mat directly behind you. The knee is facing down. Lift your navel into your spine. It'll support your lower back. Reach the opposite arm if you can. Yeah, it should also feel like we're not just sticking our leg and arm up. We're just reaching in the opposite direction. You can use the imagery of two people playing tug of war with your body. One person has your hand, the other one has your foot. And they're reaching and lengthening and pulling you in the opposite direction. They're lengthening your spine. You conscious, consciously lifting your navel into your spine and down. Good. Other side. And stretch. The knee is facing the floor. Um, you're doing what I call Barbie feet. So you're reaching to the balls of your foot and then reaching the opposite arm. Yeah. So in every exhale, you're going to reach away, 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 away from your center. Breathe. And then down. One last one on the other side. But we're going to add another uh, dimension to that. From here, you're going to bring your, your body to a cat position and bring your elbow towards your knee. Inhale, stretch. Exhale, squeeze. Inhale, stretch. And then down, other side. Reach. Exhale, squeeze. Inhale, stretch. Exhale, squeeze. Inhale, stretch. And then down. Tuck your toes under. Downward facing dog. Breathe. Look between your hands. Soften your knees. 
Walk or jump to the diagonal chair. Come up in one piece, inhale up. Exhale, float the arms down. Three breaths in, fill your lungs up with air completely, and then out. Whew. Deep breath in, and then out. Deep breath in, and then out. Go ahead and shake it out. Hydrate. Let's do a moving meditation. So um, this is part of my, my protocol that we do. We, we pretty much repeat the same, this exercise, slight variations, but essentially it's the same exercise. Go to the back of your mat, take a deep breath in, exhale, close to prayer and sit. Left foot, reach forward, and you're gonna reach forward with the opposite arm. So it's your right arm, change the weight, distribution over to the other side then the knee comes up steps back in warrior two side angle pose reverse warrior up and over diagonal chair come up in one piece inhale up exhale float the arms down deep breath in and out pick up your left foot to tree so the traditional tree position is asana is up through here. But if you're working towards your balance, you can put it down by your ankle. <clears throat> and then you would test your, your balance by lifting the ball of the foot. The other <clears throat> strategy is to go to tree from here with holding onto the chair. And then you can test your balance just having the, tree, the chair right there. Once you feel centered, we're gonna change the mudra. Index finger to thumb, drop your elbow. Lengthen your spine and breathe. Inhale up, close to prayer. And then from here, you're gonna cross your ankle, foot in front of the other ankle. But just put your hand to your hip for now. Go to your upright chair on one foot. Engage the arms, and then go to your diagonal chair. So from here, you would test your balance by lifting the ball of foot off. You could test your balance by releasing the arms. And then um, those of you who are more adept at this, you could put your foot on your thigh, your, your ankle on your thigh and take your arms here. So all these different variations as you bring the arms forward to the diagonal chair, recover to what I call praying mantis, everything is soft, and then you step back with the opposite arm. Step back with the opposite arm, feet together, deep breath in. Two more breaths, fill your lungs up with air, and then out, and then in, and out. Good, switch to the other side. Breath in, out and sit. Right foot lunges forward with the opposite arm. Other foot opposite arm. Knee up. Step back, warrior two. Inhale, exhale, side angle pose. Inhale, exhale, reverse warrior. Inhale, exhale, diagonal chair. <clears throat> Recover up and then open. Float your arms down, deep breath in. Close your prayer. From here, we're gonna to go to tree. So you can hold on to the chair if you want. You can also take, just take the ankle, the heel to the ankle and test your balance from here. Or the traditional chair position, tree position. Inhale, exhale, breathe. Once you feel stabilized, Change the mudra, inhale, exhale, close to prayer. And then the other one, you, redo, you um, transition, foot in front of the ankle or on top of your thigh. Lengthen your spine. Activate your arms. Mm. Recover the praying mantis. Step back with the opposite arm, breathe. Back with the opposite arm, feet together, deep breath in, and out. Deep breath in, and out. All right, so this last section, we're gonna separate your heels, 
and go to a squat. So the, I'll we'll give you the variations here as well. So you're gonna try to keep your spine nice and upright and then descend. So if you feel proficient here, you can just lean into your elbows, open up your inner thighs, drop your hips back, and or go into the crow's nest position where you just float and lift your feet behind you and balance. When you finish, you can roll back and sit into the floor. For those of you who want to be in the chair for this last section, just go to the chair. <clears throat> if you're on the floor, let's go to um, the half lotus position where you bring your heel up on top of your thigh. If you're on the chair, the way I am right now, depending on your flexibility and your ability to, um, to navigate these, these, switch, these changes, you can put your foot on your ankle or you can put your foot up on your thigh. From here, you're gonna to go to your um, diagonal chair position with your back. So your back is nice and flat. Just go to your diagonal chair, and then we're gonna breathe through this stretch. So again, you wanna keep your back nice and energized as you go forward, so you're not collapsed. You know, feel the energy shooting through the crown of your head. So you probably tight through the lower back of your thigh here, where, wherever it's tight, you're gonna draw your attention there on the inhale. On the exhale, you're gonna lean forward and stretch it out. Small little increments. Inhale, exhale, stretch it out. Those of you on the floor, you do the same thing. Inhale, exhale forward. Inhale, exhale forward. Those of you who are more challenged, we just have your foot down by your ankle and leaning your torso forward. And let's then transition out of that just lift your chest, lift your back, and then the other side. So um, what I had been um, asking you to do is, wherever your foot was here on this side, and the relationship of your heel to, your, to your, the crease in your waist, you wanna to try to balance it out on the other side so it's similar, as exact as possible. And so we're gonna to try to balance out the stretch that we did on the other side. Lengthen your spine, take a breath in, exhale, bending at the waist. Inhale, exhale, bending at the waist. Inhale, lengthen your spine. So you try not to, it's not important how far you go forward. It's more important that you, you stretch out the areas that you need because of its uh, inflexibility, right? And you will build up. You're gonna build up each time that you do that too. So it becomes um, better and better and better. So rather than try to like go down and collapse here, Try to keep the integrity of the back, of the, um, the strength and integrity of the spine to just bend it, creasing at the waist as you go forward. Inhale, exhale, breathe. Long, deep breath, expelling the, all the air deep in your belly. If you're not hanging on, you're just gonna release on each one. And then recover. Good. Those of you on the floor, quick demonstration. You can either extend one leg and take the other leg over the top. You can use your arms to sit up. You can also bend the bottom leg. And then from here, you're gonna twist and rotate to the other side. Those of you on the chair, you can do a variation of that. Taking the leg, oh, sorry, your leg over the top. You can use your arms to sit up nice and tall. So also be aware of the even distribution of weight in your hips, so you're not leaning over to one side. You can also do this, the twist from here to the ankle, and then when you lengthen your spine and rotate, you wanna try the rotation through the lower back and or the foot across. Idea here again, the principle of this is not to lift your hip up. So the, you have the weight evenly distributed between both hips. Your spine is nice and upright. And every exhale, you try to twist and look further back behind you.
But again, don't collapse. You're going to be up, up, up on your spine. And when you transition out of it, keep your spine nice and lifted. And then I'll work to the other side. Sit up nice and tall. Keep the hips up, um, even, and then take a breath in and rotate. Oh. Oh. Stay lifted. Rotate back to the front. And then bounce your legs out. And then you can hang, interlace your fingers again and hang back. And then if you're on the floor, you can start to roll your backs down one vertebra at a time. And lying on the floor. So those on the floor would do a variation of the bridge, alternating one leg with the other for a few seconds, or the shoulder stand, alternating the leg with the other. In case you're gonna do what's appropriate for you. Oh, that feels good. Those of you on the chair, and you can navigate your way back down to the floor, you can end up going to Shavasana with the palms facing up, or if you prefer to stay on the floor, on the chair. I'm gonna finish these last meditations Leaning back, palms on your thigh, facing up, and lengthening your spine. Everyone, no matter where you are, go into your breath. In through your nose, out through your mouth. So if you just think of the mechanics of breathing, when you take air into your lungs, it's oxygen goes in, these little capillaries through the lungs, take in the oxygenated blood, and then uh, that circulatory tissue, uh, uh, cir circulatory system, when you release all that oxygenated blood with nutrients and oxygen, rush to different parts of your body, right? So we'll get back to that in, in a few seconds. Let's go into our breath. Whew. So we're going to do a series of exercises to really to relax you and then recharge you and send you on your way. Draw your attention to your breath, the conscious breathing into your nose and out through your mouth. You can integrate the aspects of um, breathing in all the LOVEs all the H-E-A-Ls, and releasing any F-E-A-R. This can work with worry, drawing the attention to the center of your, to your head for worries, or through your heart center for emotionals, but we'll get back to that as well. So just listen to your breath, we're gonna do a relaxation. Draw the attention to your, um, your hips. Breath in, exhale, relax your hips, your lower abdominals, Continue to breathe, every exhale releasing even more. And now draw the attention to your thighs, inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Releasing on the exhales, your hips and your thighs, and now to your knees and your, on your calves. Releasing on the exhale, and now your feet. So from your waist down, you're completely relaxed. <clears throat> and now your upper arms, inhale, exhale, release on the exhale. And your forearms. And the muscles in your hands. So from your waist down and all your arms, you released and relax, surrendering to gravity, floating down to the floor. Good, let's draw the attention to your abdominal wall, 
releasing on the exhale and then across your rib cage and then across your chest your pectoral muscles your breasts releasing on your exhales and then the um, muscles in the lumbar the curvature in your lower back Ooh, deep breaths deep exhalation relaxation on the exhales and then the cord of muscles on either side of your spine in the middle of your back releasing on the exhales and then the upper back tops of your shoulders and going back down the front again your your chest pectoral muscles and your abdominal wall And now to the sides of your neck and your shoulders together. Inhale, exhale, release, disengage, unplug, relax, surrender to gravity. And the back of your neck. And your throat and tongue. Just put that weight down and release. And your jaws. And your cheeks, your ears, your lips, your eyelids, your forehead, the top of your head. A nice, easy breathing. Kind of survey your body. Where are the parts where you have residual, residual tension? Give it an extra release. Just plop down. Give yourself a time out. And go to your breath again, and now we're going to do our, our exercise in gratitude, capital G. I want you to draw your attention to, or think of something or someone for whom you're really grateful and thankful. Could be someone present, could be someone in your past. But again, because gratitude is an emotional response, let's draw the center to a heart center attention to your heart center and as if you didn't have words to, exp to express gratitude we're going to use a light to your heart center and the brighter you can emote that light then you're going to able to express that gratitude gratitude and it goes brighter and brighter and brighter especially because it's a good feeling you want to increase that So the light starts to emote, to um, radiate through your whole body, from, starting from your heart center. And you have the power to make, to express that gratitude even brighter. So through the pores of your skin, you start to illuminate like a light bulb. Greater, greater, greater. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And it lights up your whole room. And you feel even more gratitude and more thankfulness that if you did not have this in your life it would be a big missing blank. So you light up your whole room and think of like lighting up your whole house. And that house lights up the whole neighborhood. Keep emanating from your heart center and extends. So just send that out. You can use that, that energy. It could be like um, an expression of your spirit, your soul, or just energetically, your ability to light up, um, to illuminate the people and places around you. And then let's go to, um, so again, that, exper that experience, that, that meditation that we just did, represent all the things for which we're grateful. We just targeted one thing, because it was just easier to zero in and pinpoint it and concentrate on that one thing. Because we have a list of so many things for which you're grateful, and you want to use that to carry yourself through the day. 
as your touchstone for the day. And then with that, think of ways in which you can, so, so you can share that with people around you, acts of kindness you can do for them. Just put that energy out. What you put out, it comes back to you 10 times, 100 times fold. Just trust that. And now do, let's, let's do an act of kindness for yourself. Plan on something you can do today that brings you joy. That even the thought of it brings you joy. So the act of actually doing it is an act of self-healing, of self-care. And the happier you are, the happier the people around you are. So commit yourself to doing that act of kindness for yourself. And then at the end of the day, maybe lying in bed before you fall asleep, you know, check in with yourself. Hopefully you did it. If not, get up and do it. Or else, commit yourself to doing it. You know, there's so much value in actually doing this to support yourself with self-care. All right, so this final exercise is the recharge, almost the final exercise to recharge you. Um, those of you who know it, when you, when you exhale, when, you, um, when I direct you to, you're gonna let all the air of your body, and then when I give you a cue, you're gonna take a deep breath in, and you're gonna engage all those muscles just, we just relax every muscle fiber in your body, and then on the exhale, let that go. On the physical level, what happens is you're going to oxygenate all that blood and you're going to constrict the flow of that oxygenated blood. And once you let go, you're going to kickstart all this nutrients in your bloodstream to flow to the far ends of your body. <laughs> all right? And so the added extra work of that is lighting up your body. So the more engaged you are, the deeper the breath, the brighter the light that you're going to generate. And then on the exhale, you're just going to let it out and just let that, um, that light around you um, continue to go on beyond to infinity. All right here we go. Let the air out of your body, and then inhale, engage. Let it out, and out. Again, inhale, engage, and out. Oh, this last one, let's do it 10 times more than we just did it, and go! Light it up, light it up, light your whole house! <sighs> oh. Just come back to your normal ebb and flow of breathing. Move your toes and fingers and scrunch up your face. Big yawn and stretch. Uh, 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 uh. Bend your knees if you're on the floor. Roll to one side. Use your arms to come to a sitting position. And this to finish together. Keep your spine nice and upright. Deep breath in and out. Energize your spine. Energize your heart center. Clear any darkness or fear. Take a breath in and out. Thank you all for allowing me to share this with you. It's, um, it's a privilege, privilege for me every time I do this. And be sure that as much as you get out of it, I get so much more back. And I thank you for that. From the, with deeply, I thank you. And I embrace you with my thoughts. I embrace you with my words. I embrace you with my heart. Hope you have a wonderful day. Namaste.